Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson information here ellipse equations now completing the square is a tool or a kind of an algebra technique where you find the third term of a perfect square trinomial because sometimes in some formulas and equations you have to write a squared binomial you have to be able to make it look like this to determine parts of whatever shape you're graphing okay now the idea as I've mentioned before is you take the middle term you take half of it and then you square that all right, half and squared. So that's as simple as you can get. So let's look at the standard form of an ellipse. Now an ellipse, of course, is a sort of flattened or a stretched out circle. And if you can manipulate through some algebra steps here um, by completing the square, that would be the x group up here and the y group up here, then you can actually graph the ellipse because you can see all the little parts here. You want to make sure that you have an h and a k value, and that will be the center, okay, the center of the ellipse right there. And the a squared and the b squared part give you the a value and the b value. Now the a value is how wide the ellipse stretches out right and left, and the b value is how tall that ellipse is, okay, that's the y value vertically. So again, you can find the center and you can find the a values and the b values, and now you can graph the ellipse. So that's the goal. And you can only do that if you can write this in a squared binomial form by completing the square. Now let me walk through a couple of problems with you and I'll show you how this works. Number one, um, what you do is you find the constant and you want to make sure that you move that over to the right. Okay, You only want to start with the x's and the y terms here on the left. So in order to move that to the right, I don't actually move it. I'm going to subtract 49 from each side. And to just save writing, I'm going to go ahead and just write the result. It'll be a negative 49 on the right. Okay, And now it's gone from the left side there. All right, but then I need to group my x terms together. So it'll be 4x squared minus 32x. Leave a little gap there because we're going to have a third term by completing the square. And then we have the y squared minus 14y and leave another gap. Okay, we're going to complete the square twice. Now that before I go to the next step, this is something I need to check. I need to see if I can factor out a greatest common factor, a GCF, from the x group or the y group. Now look at the x group and I notice that 4 is a common factor and I definitely need to factor that out. That's going to make our job easier a little bit later on. So that's going to give us x squared minus 4x. And again, let's leave a little gap because we're going to be completing the square there. And the y squared minus 14y is, we can just kind of leave that alone. Nothing to factor out there. But remember to leave a gap and on the right I have negative 49. So in this first trinomial I need to complete the square. And remember that I'm going to take half of negative 8 which is negative 4 but I have to square that which would be a positive 16. And over here with the y group I take half of negative 14 which is negative 7 and I square that positive 49. Now I have to add what I added on the left on the right, okay? But notice that this 4 is being multiplied by the 16 because of my factoring there, right? So that's going to give me a um, 64. 4 times 16 is 64, right? And I'm also adding the 49. So by adding a 64 and a 49 on the left, I'm actually adding 113 on the right. All right, I add 113 on the left, 113 on the right total to keep everything balanced. All right, we have a perfect square trinomial in the x group, so let's go ahead and factor that 
as a squared binomial and that would be x minus 4 and the y group would be y minus 7 okay now I'm not done because remember that in the ellipse standard form I have to make it equal to 1 on the right so when I look at what I've got it's 64 there I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 64 so it looks like that now notice I have this x term here divided by 64 plus this y term divided by 64 I can split it up like that now on the left of course that's just going to be 1 which is what I wanted on the right or excuse me that's on the right on the left notice how I can do some factoring here with the 4 and the 64 um, and that's what I want is I want to make sure that there's a 1 factor out in front so that's going to give me 16 all right let's rewrite it in standard form so here's our final formula and that tells us that the center is at 4 7 both of those are positive if we were going to graph this ellipse the a value is 4 because 16 is 4 squared and the b value is 8 because 64 is 8 squared so given that information I should be able to graph it if needed all right that's a lot of work you just have to keep track of what you're doing let's look at number two all right I'm grouping these X's together and the Y's together I'm not leaving a space yet because I see that I have to factor out a GCF greatest common factor from the X's and then the Y's and I noticed that for 16 and 128 the largest common factor to take out is the 16 so inside I'm gonna have X squared minus 8 X okay and I'll leave a gap to complete the square and for the nines definitely nine it would be the greatest common factor there so when I factor that out that leaves me on the inside with y squared minus 8y again leave a gap for the completed square there alright the third term here must be half of negative 8 is negative 4 square it to make 16 half of negative 8 again is negative 4 and square it to make 16 alright now it's a little bit tricky here but take a look 16 times 16 is what I actually added and 9 times 16 over here that's 256 and 144 and so I add the total there which is actually 400 on the right so on the left I'm adding 400 and on the right I'm adding 400 keeping it balanced so now I need to complete the square and up here um, notice that it would be um, x minus 4 inside there and y minus 4 inside there okay total of 144 on the right in the standard form of an ellipse I definitely need to have a 1 on the right hand side of the equation so I'm going to divide each side by 144 and I can split it up over here underneath each term and now let's do some simplifying and that gives us our final equation form of x minus 4 squared over 9 plus y minus 4 squared over 16 equals 1 now I hope you were sticking with me there but the center then is going to be at 4 4 the a distance horizontally out from the center for this ellipse would be 3 because of course 9 is 3 squared and B would have to be 4 because that's 4 squared gives you 16 alright so Thanks so much for watching. It's a lot of algebra, but hopefully you can follow my steps. And now if we had to, we could graph that ellipse after completing the square twice. All right, thanks a lot for watching this video. If you think this is helpful, share it with others and send me some comments. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.